Did you know that street drugs can have some seriously unexpected and undesirable consequences? I'm Dr. Rena Malik, urologist and pelvic surgeon, and today I'm going to review how some of the most common drugs can affect your bladder, your genitals, and even your fertility. The first drug, which is cannabis. Now this is actually legal in many states in the United States and very commonly used. So it's really important to know the side effects. So in the short term, marijuana can actually enhance sexual pleasure. And that's because it works as a relaxant. And in the short term, it can cause the body to release dopamine, which elevates pleasure sensors. This can then lead to heightened sexual sensitivity. But if you get too high or use it chronically, those same relaxing properties can cause drowsiness or even low desire. Sometimes it can even affect the ability to have erections or on the other hand, cause a heightened sensitivity leading to premature ejaculation. And also in both genders, it's been seen to be related to difficulty achieving orgasm and pain with sex in women. Again, these issues are most often when using it chronically. We also know that it can affect fertility. In fact, in a study of 1,200 young Danish men, regular cannabis smoking, meaning more than once per week, reduced sperm concentration by 52% and total sperm count by 55%. These changes in semen parameters are thought to be dose dependent. So if you're using a lot of it, you're going to see more harm. And generally, if you're trying to conceive, we suggest as urologists, it's best to stop using it. Now, number two, cocaine. Cocaine is known to increase sex drive, and the thought is it makes the dopamine receptors more sensitive. In fact, they've seen that cocaine use in either the solid form or the powder form intranasally, or if it's used on the genitals directly, has been associated with what's called priapism. Now, priapism is a long erection that is often painful and usually lasts over four hours without sexual stimulation. Now, Priapism is actually an emergency because when you have a certain type of priapism, the blood can get trapped in the erectile tissue and that prevents oxygen from actually getting to the tissue. And after about four to six hours, this starts resulting in tissue damage. And if you wait too long, that damage becomes irreversible. So it needs to be treated immediately. And unfortunately, cocaine users tend to present late, likely because it's also a mind altering substance. And so they are are more likely to develop scarring or fibrosis of the tissues that's often irreversible. There's also some concern that chronic cocaine use can stop the endothelium or the lining of the vessels from producing nitric oxide synthase. And this is a substance that is responsible for creating nitric oxide, which is basically the ignition for erections. So if this happens, it can also affect the ability to get erections. So number three, opioid opioids or opiates. We know endorphins, which are natural opiates that are produced by our bodies, have been found to reduce testosterone levels by inhibiting the production of a hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone, which is in the hypothalamus and is responsible for stimulating testosterone production in the testicles. Now, when it comes to men who use sustained action oral opioids like methadone, studies have shown that men consuming about 100 milligrams Milligrams of methadone daily are more likely to develop low testosterone and symptoms of what we call hypogonadism. And these symptoms can include fatigue, low libido, depression, reduced muscle mass, or even erectile dysfunction. In fact, erectile dysfunction has been reported in up to 87% of methadone users. In heroin users, similarly, it suppresses another hormone called LH that's responsible for stimulating the testosterone to produce testosterone. And chronic use of this is associated with a decrease in plasma testosterone levels and a decreased sex drive. In some cases, also heroin users will be looking for veins around the body after they've used all their arm veins. And some of them will actually use the veins on the penis called the dorsal vein, which can lead to complications with infections of the skin of that area. Number four, amphetamines. Amphetamines can cause things like speed dick, speed willy, or wisdom 
dick. So let me explain. Taking amphetamines is known to cause a range of effects, including tachycardia or increased heart rate, euphoria, appetite suppression, but they can also affect sexual function. And this is because there is significant vasoconstriction of blood vessels. And during the peak effect, these psychostimulants actually have been reported to cause a shrinkage of the flaccid penis, with some sources suggesting that it can reduce to actually a third of its normal size. If also at some point men are trying to stimulate the penis, they may also notice delayed ejaculation. Interestingly, even when using and particularly abusing drugs for ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, there have been reports of erectile dysfunction and reduced libido, so be careful. Number five, ecstasy or MDMA. MDMA can have a variety of impacts, and these can include excessive sweating, increased thirst, and even enhanced sexual pleasure. But they can also be associated with risk-taking behavior, like unprotected sex, which then increases the risk of spreading sexually transmitted infections like HIV. In fact, studies conducted on sleep-deprived rats showed that MDMA can enhance genital reflexes, leading to more frequent erections and ejaculations. Number six, ketamine. Now I've talked about ketamine before in my video on this one thing could permanently destroy your bladder, but ketamine is typically used as an anesthetic agent. However, its use as a recreational drug has become more and more common. Ketamine use, particularly chronically, has been found to result in bladder or what we call lower urinary tract symptoms. And these can include frequency, meaning needed to go to the bathroom more often, urgency, a sudden and strong desire to urinate, and dysuria or painful urination. In fact, in some small series, they found evidence of inflammatory cystitis or basically inflammation of the bladder in patients taking ketamine. And they found that these patients have really small bladders with ulcerations. And that's usually not reversible. But we do think that if you notice symptoms early and you stop using ketamine, you can actually prevent this irreversible bladder damage. Lastly, steroids. Now, a lot of bodybuilders and people who want to dramatically increase muscle mass will take steroids to improve their body image. However, taking steroids long term can result in decreased testosterone and hypogonadism and infertility because the testicles stop producing sperm after getting signals because that increased cortisol reduces testosterone, making the testicles less likely to keep producing sperm. Now, this can be reversible, but it depends on a few factors, like how long you've been taking the steroids, and often this reversal can take several months to even a full year, and often requires you taking a lot of different medications to reboot your body's normal hypothalamic pituitary axis, which is responsible for the signals to the testicles that make testosterone again. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other video on smoking, marijuana, and vaping, and how it affects your sexual function and fertility. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to subscribe and share this channel with your friends. And as always, remember to take care of yourself because you're worth it.